just as mess over good men. You sleep around, have fun, and breed with the bad boys. But they will mess over good men. It's because they see some sign of weakness. Your weakness is screaming out to them, and they're jumping in to take advantage. I know you pride yourself on being a good man, because that's how you were raised. But if you don't man up, these jizzes are going to smell you from a mile away. And you will be a victim of her wrath. Good luck. I want you men to understand one thing. Nice guys make a woman dry, dry. And hard heads make that same woman wear wear. That's just the way it is. You can go anywhere to get the lies, but I know you came here to get the truth. Welcome to the Alphasphere. Welcome to the Alphasphere. The only place on the planet that's totally engulfed in positivity and totally submerged in alpha energy. I'm your host, Dr. B.O.A. Where did that happy wife, happy life stuff come from? Oh, a nigga that couldn't get no p- and he finally got a pretty girlfriend that he got to marry because he had a good job. And, and, and all his life, he'd been having to ask for pussy. So every time his wife was happy, he got some pussy. And when she wasn't happy, he didn't get no pussy. Yeah. So he the one came with that saying. I ain't never heard that before. As hilarious and comical as that sounds, man, it's the absolute truth. But I'm going to take it one step further than that. When a man believes happy wife, happy life, it's not that he believes that making that woman happy makes him happy. He believes that having that woman in his life makes him happy. And in his mind, in his beta male simp mangina mind, the way to keep her in his life is to make her happy. So it's not that he believes, okay, because the woman is happy, it'll directly re- correlate to his happiness. No, if he keeps her happy, she will stay. And having her makes him happy. Mean thing. That's it. So as a man, you have to prioritize yourself. And if you don't prioritize yourself, and it's a tough thing to do because you're in a society that tells you, no, don't prioritize yourself. You got to think about everybody else. You, The society has turned you men into the caring, loving, wholesome, you know, heartwarming, fucking nurturing type of suckers that will not last in any other society but this one. And you can't last in this one. All that lovey doveyness and all that caring and sharing and all that falling in love, all the shit is getting you, man, is dead in your 40s and 50s. It's too stressful of a situation for a man to be in to be all lovey dovey like that. The only love you got is love for God and love for you. Everyone else is your responsibility. You don't take care of your children out of love, you take care of your children out of responsibility because that's what you do as a motherfucking man. You don't provide and protect for your household out of love. You provide and protect for your household because that's your responsibility. That's what you do as a motherfucking man. You in a society keep telling you to do shit out of love. Well, what happens when those opportunities to do those things are gone? That love you're giving, it goes with those people. If you do it out of responsibility, when it's no longer your responsibility, you you move on with your life and recreate your life quickly. You don't sit around and fester. No one has to be sorry for you because you're a sucker. A woman don't have to look at you and say, oh, Mr. Beta Mel, I know you'll give me whatever I want, even though I don't like you, but I'm going to be fair to you, Mr. Beta Mel. It's your job to be fair to yourself. Nah, I was once dating this chick, right, Skip, mm. and she was she was married, but she was getting a divorce. Mm. I knew I wanted her. I said, you know what? I'll pay for the divorce mm. because I believe she was the one. Right. That's what I did. Mm. I said, why are you arguing about this? He wouldn't sign the papers. I said, why are you arguing about this little bit of money? I gave her the money, filed the divorce because I believe if they believed in Baker Mayfield, they would do the exact same thing. Mm. I keep it 100 with y'all here, Skip, but I did that. I'm going to be honest with you, man. The best thing Shannon Shop ever did was not get married. Because his ass would be going down through that. Let me tell you something, boy. If you're going to take your hard-earned money and pay for a woman to get out of a situation with her husband and he don't want to let her go, you lack understanding and spiritual astuteness. 
In God's world, a woman can't divorce her husband. So any woman who has divorced her husband, she ain't even divorced for real. I ain't finna deal with a woman who divorced her husband. Man, I ain't finna do it. You ain't divorced for real. That man didn't want to let you go. You can't leave him. God don't give you that type of power because you're an idiot. You're going to use love and emotion to make decisions that could affect the rest of your life in a negative manner. So God did the wise thing. He didn't give you that right. But we live in a society where a woman can make that choice. So here's a woman in a situation. Her husband don't want, he don't, he don't want no divorce. Like Tia Maori husband, what the name is? Corey Hardrick. He don't want no divorce. He's still fighting for his family. That woman that moved on, wearing scantily clad clothes, getting blessed out by her son and doing all of that, and that boy's still trying to hold on to save the marriage. Why? Because you invest yourself emotionally into a situation so much that you're willing to compromise your manhood on behalf of the woman. Shannon Sharp just told you that's what he did. He said, you going back and forth in court with him by that little bit of money, I'm paid. I will pay for you to get away from him who you are emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and, and physically tied to and financially tied to so I can have you. Why? Because I believed. You believed what? You believe what the woman told you. You believe what the woman sold you. Let me tell y'all one thing right now, man. Y'all been able to forget this as long as you live. A woman that's in a fucked up situation with another man, any man is better than him. A woman could be in a messed up situation with a man who got plenty of money and go deal with a nigga who ain't even got no car. Why? Because any peaceful dealing with someone is better than a situation, a, a tumultuous situation at home. It's the same thing with you and me. If you're in a tumultuous situation at home with a dime piece, man, you'll find yourself laid up, man, with a fat chick. Getting fed, getting freaked, and getting the most peaceful sleep you done had in 10 years and three weeks because you got a battle axe at home and it's constant war in your household. So never let a woman come to you when she in the midst of a tumultuous situation. Of course you going to be better than that. But that don't mean she wants you. You just a release. You just some peace. When well, she can get out the belly of the beast. But she might not even want you in the least. And after coming out of that, bro, might be for the streets. Preach. Stop living your life in a way to believe you got to take whatever is in front of you like there ain't no other options in the world. You ain't never got to take what's right in front of you. You can always hold out. Stop letting your wood lead you. Because your wood is always up to no good. Without control, he'll throw himself in any hole. You understand what I'm saying? You have to put yourself in the man in the mindset where your spirit man guides you. And it may take you somewhere that other people might not agree with. So what? You're not listening to them. They don't know you. They don't know your life. They don't know your connection to the most high. They don't know your connection to your woman. They don't know your connection to your children. They don't know your connection to yourself. So why you worrying about what they say? You know, I don't ever tell y'all, man, what kind of woman you need to be with. Hey, man, you want to be with a big girl. You like big girl, man, get you a big girl that you're happy with. You like small girl, real, you like really petite girl, man, get you a petite girl that you happy with. You like older chicks, hey, man, get you a wall banger that you happy with. You like younger chicks, get you a legal, a legal, legal now. Younger chick, man, enjoy your life. You don't want no kid. If you, you listen. If you don't want no kid, and you can get a younger chick, you probably get your young chick that already got a couple of kids, or maybe one kid, and don't want no more kids. Cause you're wasting your time if you try to like literally be in some real shit with a woman who ain't got no kids. She want them, and you don't want none. This situation's gonna come up, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a constant drag on a relationship. So you got to look at yourself, where you are in life, and you got to do what you think is best for you, not what I say, not what nobody else say. Man, let me tell you something. Half of these dudes that's always negative about women. And, you know, I don't only be like talk about these dudes, man, because they ain't worth my time. You understand what I'm saying? When it come to levels, man, shit, I'm on a level of the cloud. They're on a the level of the devil with a shovel. That's how deep they are up under me, man. So let me tell you something. Most of these guys who always got something negative to say about women, they don't even have enough ex negative or positive experiences with women. They base it on what they've been told. Or they based it on one situation. They was the beta male simp mangina, the worst beta they ever been. And they went into a situation with a scallywag. They ain't got enough experience with women to know the majority of time you can have a positive experience with a woman. If you accept who she is and you're honest about who you are so she can accept who you are. 
that that shit is always going to be positive. Is it going to be lifelong? No. But if people been married for 10 years in divorce court right now, so that shit didn't last lifelong either. We ain't talking about what's going to last for lifelong. Why? Because you don't even know how life, how long lifelong is for you. So stop trying to worry about shit lasting forever and worry about what's best for you today and try to put what's best for you today in place so it'll trickle into tomorrow and you'll start off tomorrow with something that's at least good for you. Why would a man who has full control over his life look at a woman and say, you're so valuable that I'm going to give you 50% of control over some shit that you ain't helped me build at all? <clears throat> you, ain't put, you ain't put forth one bit of effort? None? You ain't even know what the hell is going on? And I'm going to give you 50% control? I'm going to give you 50% say so? 50% say so in what? Hell, you need to give me 100% say so in your life. But I'm going to give you 50% say so in mine. Why? Why would I do? Man, let me tell you something. Next time I want to talk to you about 50 50 relationship, just sit down and ask her the question. Okay, now, I want you to sit down and explain to me why that would be beneficial to me. I promise you, I she's going to come up with ways that it would be beneficial to her and ways that it'll benefit you to benefit her because you'll be happy because your woman is happy. You're going to get back to that. She going to, she, everything always circles back when a woman is talking about power and control and what she wants. It always circles back to some happy wife, happy life type shit. It might not be said exactly like that, but it always circles back to that type of ideology. Don't you want me to be happy? Yeah. You were happy when you met me though, right? Without control of none of my shit. If that if that's going to make you happy, then you are a miserable woman. You are very, very sad. You need some counseling. You don't need to have for my shit. You need to go sit down and lay on that couch and talk to somebody. Go blow some trees or something, baby. You need some help. <laughs>